Amy, hello. Hi guys, I'm Amy. And I'm Ellie. Um, we spent quite a few months actually uh, coming up with um, some great statistics ideas that we could use in our AP stats classroom about this election, just this past election. Um, and not so past election, we were really excited to learn um, that the date of this presentation was gonna be the 18th because it was yesterday that the Electoral College actually voted for who was gonna be president on December 17th, and it's not until January 6th that Congress counts those votes. So this is still a very timely topic. <laughs> I, I bet you guys didn't know that. And then of course, January 20th is when we actually have our inauguration. So the vote didn't happen until yesterday. Yeah. Um, so in the United States, we have 538 electoral votes. Uh, they're allocated by the US Census, which is performed every 10 years. Um, you need 270 to win. So as you can see from the map, um, some of the larger states like California and Texas, and even us, New York, we have uh, quite a bit of electorate vote power. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Nebraska and Maine do things a little differently, and they actually can divvy up their electorate votes based on uh, whatever they feel like doing, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> And we thought that even though this information was gonna be great to have like in a map form, um, Ellie came up with some great cards and manipulatives that we could use the information a little bit better in our classrooms. Instead of cutting up the map, uh, we made these cards that have the state where it's placed in the United States. So coming out of this activity, if the least they learned is where Nebraska was, that was great. Um, it has the population from the 2010 census, so that was a plug for census data, and then the electoral college number. Um, and in both of our classes, the students use these cards and were able to um, answer a couple of different leading questions that we asked them. And then they ended up asking their own questions that really forged new directions in this activity. So these are my AP statistics students, uh, looking a little bit like professional poker players with these cards. Um, some of the things, simple things we explored were questions like, uh, what would be the minimum number of states that a president could get for the 270 electorate votes? Happens to be uh, magically 11. Um, we also looked a little bit about ratios of uh, population per elector. So in some smaller states where they would have three electorate votes, each person's vote actually counts a little bit more than the bigger states. Um, not surprisingly, California has the uh, lowest per capita power for electorate vote. Um, some people think it's DC that has the smallest, but it's actually Wyoming. So that was fun for them to discover on their own. Meanwhile, at the high school of telecommunications, <laughs> um, they were also using cards and we went a little bit deeper into the census data and you can look up the percentage of uh, people living in that state who are above 18 years old and then assuming that everyone votes, um, they figured out that you could, uh, president could win the election and represent only 8% of the population, um, which was very shocking to the students. So we also used Fathom to create a linear regression model. Um, I'll let you talk about this. Oh, yeah. part. Um, so Fathom is a program that's from Key Curriculum Press. It's like the stats version of um, Geometer Sketchpad. I think there's gonna be a talk about it um, on a Saturday in a couple of weeks. Um, and so this is taking the data on the cards and organizing it in a different way. So this is the population in millions, and then that's the electoral college number. So red is New York. Um, and then if you're teaching integrated algebra, you can look at this and simply say, it's a positive, strong, linear relationship, and look at the R, it's 0.9996. We actually had to add significant digits to get that, and they were, they were rounding it earlier. So. Yeah, so the, the linear model that the program came up with is that uh, expected electoral count is 2 plus 1.42 times 10 to the negative 6 for every million in population. Um, this actually is not only a phenomenally good mathematical model, but it's actually really bright if you think about it. Um, the initial value of 2 makes sense because you would get 2 for each senator in a state. And then the slope also really is kind of interesting. So what the slope is saying is that for every increase of 1 million people in a state, you would get an increase of about 1.42 electors. Um, so that was nice for us to talk about. The R squared is the coefficient of determination. So that talks a little bit about the variability of the model. So in this particular case, 
almost 100% of the variability in the electoral count can actually be explained by the change in population. So if you think about that in the model, for every one standard deviation um, a state is above the average for population, you would expect about the same for elector count. So it's almost a, a complete match. It's very nice. Um, and if you follow, the red dot is New York, and we can follow that to the residual plot. And in AP Stats, we use this to talk about if this linear model is appropriate. Um, here is New York. So you can see it, it's uh, the model overestimates it, which means that um, it has a negative residual, which means that New York should get more electoral college votes than we are earned, than we, than we get. Um, and so students will look at this, and if you look at this side of the residual plot, usually that's what they see when they do a textbook problem or whatever. This residual plot is boring, um, it shows no pattern, that's what you want. But then you move over to the larger states, and it shows that oftentimes the model is under <laughs> underestimating, positive residual underestimating what they should get. I'm going to get this switched around. Um, so they, in their analysis, and Amy, in your class, they talked about this, about smaller yeah, versus larger. Yeah, we got a little political, you know, just talking a little bit about maybe how the fairness of an electorate voting system. Um, we didn't go too much into that because that would be a social studies class, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it's just interesting to see a little bit how the larger states act differently in this particular modeling. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was a super timely project, and uh, if you guys want to do this, obviously it's still happening because yesterday is when the election was. Um, so our students during the election um, were, were felt very involved in what was going on in current events, um, especially in something that they um, could not participate in by actually voting, but felt like they could be part of what was going on by the work that was happening in their classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and like you were saying, an interdisciplinary, like it had... Like that is a history question, right. not so much in this class. Yeah. There was a lot of Nate Silver, you know, adoration going on in the classroom. Yeah. The kids became pundits. Um, so looking at this map, you can um, picture some students in our classes feeling like they had some questions about places that are not on this map. And uh, some of my students in particular had questions about Puerto Rico. What if Puerto Rico were a state? And what I liked about this project so much was Amy and I, um, you know, met to plan it, we had all these things in place, and then uh, you know things came up, and the data changes. We can't plan on this. Um, so as soon as my st my students brought that up, um, I said, "Oh, that's the lesson for tomorrow." So I'll let uh, Aileen and Nina talk to you about it. I think this video will work. Action. So that brought up implications of, like Amy said, there's 538 electoral college votes, and there are um, how there's a reallocation issue with if Puerto Rico became a state, and then students got involved in that and went into their history classes and were like, what if Puerto Rico were a state? And it was just cool to look at a, a question that would otherwise be a history question through a mathematical lens. So next year is the mayoral election. So we now, we, Ellie and I have to come up with <laughs> ways to do something like this for the mayoral election. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>